What does a yellow light mean? Slow down. What does a yellow light mean? Slow down. What does a yellow light mean? Slow down. What does a yellow light mean? What's funny is when I took the driving test in Michigan before you guys were born, they referred to that as an amber light. And I wasn't alerted to that, so I had to kidnap somebody, and then I got an A on it. Yeah. And so forth. Yeah. He ad-libbed the last two or three slowdowns. He was only supposed to say it twice. But he just kept going, and the audience kept laughing. So. Yeah. I shouldn't drop something into Louie's coffee. No. Did you guys see the taxi yet with Ted Danson? What a great episode. What a beautiful audience. Mm. Noah Lane, don't do it. You're better than him. She says, that's right. I am better than you. And she walks out. And then Danny DeVito takes his, you know, hair coloring, disgusting, and pours it all over Ted Danson. And he says, she's better than you, but I'm not. Then he finds some attractive woman and like kisses her and then puts her away and then leaves. <laughs> uh, and so forth. <clears throat> uh, have a good bishop. That's right. They're all just taking the driving test. Yeah. Frosty Balrog subscribe. Good, good. Hooray. Yeah, Elaine was having a bad hair day. All right, let's have a look at trying to learn chess games. All right, as I said yesterday, the, the, when he called me after the games, they weren't really related to what happened in the game. So, All right, this is after he analyzed him. My only win, I had no business winning this game, but my opponent got in massive time trouble and lost when they hung a ruck. I didn't understand the position, but my opponent didn't either. That's every position of all four games you played. That last sentence applies to all of those. Okay. So, trying to learn was white against the Nantha Kumar, and it's a slow time control. Uh, accidents will happen. Let's see. I'm going to tell you something funny. You guys are going to laugh for five minutes. I'll wait, and then we'll continue. <clears throat> you ready? You got to be ready to laugh like for the rest of your life. So, somebody put a marker on this. In life, there are people that I confuse. People who other people tell me have nothing to do with each other. They don't look alike. They don't sound alike. They're not the same age. But to me, they're very similar. To me. I have a lot of these people. And one example, which I've already told you, is Richard Report and uh, Jan Christoph Duda. I don't know who's higher rated. I don't know who's better. I don't know who's older. And they're just the same person to me. And then and Spencer's like ridiculous. Like, you know, their, their styles couldn't be more opposite and so forth. What's funny is after Duda won the World Cup and his rating went up a thousand points, Report was still higher rated than Duda. I was like, what? I thought that would just settle it. Okay, China learns white, plays B3. Okay. So trying to learn hasn't made any mistakes so far, which is odd because the game is already four moves long. Uh, okay. <clears throat> this position's occurred many times in chess. Um, I always play D4. You could also play knight E2. You could take this and double the pawns. Um, you could play c4. I, I've never seen h3, so that's a first. It doesn't lose, so I guess that's, you know. Okay, now your opponent played totally insane. h5 is just nuts. 
this is this is worse than usual because <clears throat> about ninety eight percent of the time Black Castle's king side from that position. And now castling king side looks sort of crazy. So this is incredibly poor. This is just like I mean, it doesn't make any sense, but it's not bad. Okay, knight f3 is okay. Bishop g7 is okay. Knight c3 is very weird. When you play knight c3, you want to play queen e2 in castles. But, you know, I probably wouldn't want to do that. Um, you can. Yeah, just castling's good. d4 is good. Okay. g6 is okay. Bishop c4 doesn't make any sense. I've already played here. So I, that's not a move. You already developed your bishop. Play d4, play d3, you can castle. You could take that, which I wouldn't do. But. Okay, bishop h6 is nonsensical. Bishop should go to g7. Queen e2 is barely legal. It's, you're trying to get your bishop trapped, but it's not, it's not getting trapped. Yeah. Man, I want to make that joke, but I can't make it. Really good joke. Yeah, I can't make that joke. Okay. Obviously, it had to do with that. It's barely legal. Okay. <clears throat> Queen e7. Yeah. So, this game is what we describe as people who are wood pushers. They just make moves and then they're legal. So, that's, that's what's happening so far. Castles is good. Knight a5 is, you know, legal, I guess. Okay, knight b5 is from another planet, I guess. Uh, that's, doesn't make any sense. Um, let's see, in this position, the engine just wants to play d4, which it does every move. Right, you get to challenge the center. You can't just let center pawn sit there forever. Okay, bishop f5 is not the best. Knight h4 is weird. d5. Yeah. So d5 looks really good, and it sort of wins a piece, and it's fine. Now, irrespective of the value of your moves, okay, not like that's good, that's bad, that, that doesn't matter. When moves are good and bad in this kind of environment, it's not because of the analytical powers of the players. It's random. Like this could have been good or it could have been bad. And this could have been good and this could have been bad. And the players don't know. They're just like, I hope this is good, so I'm going to play it. Okay. That's fine. That's, you know, that's, that's how you guys play. Now, when you're, this is what is important. When your bishop is developed and you block all of its squares, you have to realize you're doing that. You can't go here, you can't go here, and you can't go here. And the reason you can't is because you played those moves. You played here, you played here, you played here, you played here. It wasn't because your opponent did something. Your opponent did nothing. So now there's all kinds of issues like c6, d5, e4, or just d5 right away. Now, since your opponent's bishop is here, which is nonsensical, obviously should be here. The diagonal's open and you know, he's hitting on nothing, you know. Just Okay, because of that, he's not completely winning. If his bishop was here, I think he'd just be winning by playing d5. Okay. Now, here's why what you're doing is wrong. Not because the engine says it's wrong. Not because I say it's wrong. Not because every player on earth says it's wrong. That's not why it's wrong. And not because people from other planets and universes say it's wrong. That's not relevant at all. The reason it's wrong is you're making moves with one move threats, which I told you not to do. And then when your opponent does something about it, you make another one move threat. And you don't know what your opponent's doing. You don't realize your bishop is trapped. I mean, that's you have to realize your bishop doesn't have anywhere to go. That's what you have to realize. And if you're like, 
oh, no, no, I saw C6, and here's my analysis, and I saw D5, and here's my analysis, and you were wrong, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you're wrong. But if you're like D5, oh, my bishop's trapped. That's, that's what's wrong. Turns out, because your opponent played knight A5 and bishop H6, even though your bishop's trapped, you have tricks to escape because your opponent's moves don't make any sense. Okay. And here you gave up. Okay, because that's what you did in college is you, you, you know, majored in giving up. So if you take the bishop, which was the reason you played knight H4, that's why you played knight H4. And then he takes back. The only way to save your bishop is here because that's the only way to save your bishop. Now, you're afraid of two moves. You're afraid of e4, and you're afraid of a6, and then e4. Turns out, neither one of those is good. It turns out you're fine here. So what he should do, according to the engine, and we'll explain why in a second, is he should go here and then here. Because he has a nice center, and the position's about equal. Now, let's look at the moves you were afraid of. Now, you intentionally gave your bishop away instead of going here. That's also very bad. It's not very bad because the engine says it's bad. That's not why it's bad. It's bad because you knew this lost a piece and you knew this lost a piece, which it doesn't. But if this did lose a piece, if it did, which is what you thought, this is a much better way to lose a piece. Much better. If you go here, you've done nothing to ruin Black's position. Nothing. But if you go here, Black ruins his position by playing e4 and taking your bishop. Okay? Because this bishop is the best bishop ever. Then he has doubled, isolated, isolated pawns, and your knights come in f5. And white's actually better here, even though you're losing a piece, because this is dumb, and this is dumb, and this is dumb, and this is dumb. Black's position, I mean... And I showed this to Kurt Cobain. I'm a grandmaster, so I can still talk to Kurt Cobain. And he, he said he thinks you're dumb. And that wasn't nice of him, I thought. But, I mean, he's dead, so I gave him some dispensation. Yeah. Now, first of all, other than sacking a piece with winning compensation, you could also just take this. Check. And then take this. This is also good for you. Then if he takes your bishop... Now this is hanging, this is hanging, this is hanging. These are doubled, this is isolated, he can't castle, etc. Well, they can't castle that way. Um, and you're better here. And you can see this pawn structure is awful. If you didn't see knight take c7, which you didn't, that's fine. Knight d4, which is one of the reasons you want him to go here, threatening knife f5. If he takes your bishop, which he shouldn't do, now knife f5 is, is impossible to stop. And then you release the latent potential of the bishop and the knight and the bishop are all over him like Oprah on self-promotion. Now, I was watching YouTube today on my phone. I was looking at my videos, then it recommended videos. Blah. And one of them was a family feud clip that was like four minutes long. And it said, which one of these women um, has, it wasn't the best, but, oh, has great booty instead of beauty. Okay, because they're being cute. Who has great booty, but not, not beauty. And so the woman rang in and said, Marilyn Monroe. Nobody's heard of Marilyn Monroe, so that got an X. The next guy rang in and named a woman from like Game of Thrones. I don't mean the actress's name, the character. I didn't know who he was talking about. I've never seen that show. That also got buzzed. Okay. Now the point of this story is the answers that were correct were all normal. The normal answers. J-Lo and, you know, Nicki Minaj. And number one was Kim Kardashian. Okay. So they got everything. The board was filled up except number four, and nobody got number four, the fourth most common answer. There were six answers. The fourth most common answer, confusing the audience, 
I hope you're sitting down, was Oprah Winfrey. Terrible. Yeah, that reminds me of this game. I don't know why. Yeah. This is all, all true story. I can't make up something that silly. Now, it doesn't matter if White's losing, winning, or equal here. That doesn't matter. What matters is that you all realize and you all agree if you're scared of e4 winning a piece, which it does, you know to capture your piece, your opponent has to take, and you take, and this is the worst pawn structure ever. Right, so I'll, I'll play a non-move so my bishop can go to e2. Okay, my bishop. And then takes, takes. Now black may be winning here, maybe. Maybe he's losing, maybe it's equal. It literally doesn't matter. Dar's call subscribed. What matters is if you compare this position to what you did, which was here, I mean, those, that's a fine, that's fine pawn structure. Knight's great, pawns are together, etc. You're still not losing, losing, because queen d3 is a fork. And a sample variation, which is funny to me, is if he defends his knight and his pawn, then he will know your name is the Lord when you go here. And if he lives in Kansas City, he'll know your name is Lord. Why do I have 1,500 viewers? Am I being um, embedded or something? I didn't see anybody raid me. Did I miss a raid? Why not hanging checkmates? I don't know. Hanging checkmates bad. Bishop takes f6, queen takes h5. Are you suggesting bad moves on purpose? Yeah. They're on purpose. I mean, queen here's mate, and bishop takes wins, and that's an absurd... I mean, to win this pawn for your bishop is frankly ridiculous. Okay. All right. So in this position, you, you took... You... You... you 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 you'd play bishop takes d5. Blah. Okay. You played knight c3. Now, here's what's funny. Many, 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 many times I've told trying to learn not to make moves like knight h4 and knight b5. But he literally can't help it. He can't. He has to make one move threats instead of improving his position. He has to. But if you, when your bishop goes out to the fourth or fifth rank, it, which is where it usually goes, you can easily get trapped if you don't have escape squares. You gotta have escape squares. So when your bishop's on here and then you can't go back, you, know, you don't lose your bishop. Terrible. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Usually he's complaining about my analysis. Where did he leave already? Oh, yeah. And this is why super grandmasters play slowly. You can't play queen b5. It's not your turn. Okay, you have to know whose turn it is in chess. See, the knight's here. Can't play queen b5. After here, it's not your turn. All right. Um, if it was your turn, this seems pretty reasonable. Ooh, looks good. I guess then knight c6, queen takes. And then I don't know what to do. I guess you're you're winning. Okay. Now. Okay, so in this position, he played knight b6. That's, you know, not very good. Now you have a free pawn. And then this pawn's weak. But you checked attacking the knight. Even though it doesn't make any sense. Once he plays knight c6, you're like, why did I play queen b5 check? So I don't understand that move. I understand this move. It wins a pawn and threatens another pawn. So black defends his pawn, then it's your move again. So, yeah. Let me show you a computer line to show you how bad everybody is at chess. After this, the engine plays here.
if you take, which is the best move, I take and it's a skewer. It's a trap. Now, the best move is, there's only one move here that gives black the advantage. Every other move, white's winning. It's the obvious move. This. I did it like this. I did it like that. Then takes, takes, takes. And black is up a piece. And white has three pawns for the piece. And one passed pawn. So black's, you know, much better here. Because you know, white's pawns are ridiculous. All right. All right. So you checked. And he went here. So if I was your chess coach, I would say, did you see that move? Or did you hope he didn't play it? Either answer is bad. Now, if you said, I didn't see knight c6, I thought I was winning a piece, that's reasonable. That's a reasonable answer. You saw it, then you, you, then you shouldn't play queen b5 check. His knight's terrible on a5. And in c6, it's great. Okay. Back to whatever it is I was doing. I'm worried somebody raided me and I didn't see it. But I don't see anybody raiding me. So I guess I'm being embedded or something. Okay. Yeah, one time you said I'm so wise. I actually almost got in trouble once. Uh, I was in my hotel room and <clears throat> I was playing Carly Simon. You know, it was just like playing random songs on my phone. Carly Simon came on and a bat flew into my hotel room and then all of a sudden Dracula appeared. I'm like, what are you doing here? And he said, oh, oh, I thought that was, I thought that was you. I heard you're so veined. And I was like, you know, and the Dracula was like this. And I said, no, that's a song. He said, oh, okay, sorry. And then he left. You're so veined. All right. Then you played F4. I mean, this bishop is hitting against a rock here, and you made it just hit Afghanistan. I made that joke up once when I was listening to Simon and Garfunkel. Now you know what it's like when God tells a joke. You spelled too wrong and too soon. Jesus. That's the correct too soon. I wonder if anybody got the Simon and Garfunkel joke. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I am a rock. I am Afghanistan, and Afghanistan feels no pain until the U.S. withdraws. Da -dun -da -dun -da -dun -da. Okay, yeah, this move's not good. It helps this bishop. A6 is legal. Queen E2 is barely legal. Okay, you could just take it on F4, but castles is fine. Oh, now you take the pawn when it's risky. That's good. Got to play risky. Okay, that's good. Queen F3 is legal. E4 is legal. And you're down a piece. H4 is what we call anti-positional. You give up the G4 square and your pawns are, you know, in accordion style. That move's barely legal. Always play King B1. That's the engine move. These moves are legal. Da, da, da. And those are pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Da, 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 da. And this is the game he won. Yeah, so the engine wants to play knight f6, knight g4. And then the king side just totally dominated my black. And then black can go to work on this d pawn in the queen side. Also, rook here is good, trying to do stuff here. And it doesn't matter, black's up a piece. But he's very one, you know, he has one idea. Like Fox, he has just one gun. 
sure what his idea is. All right, that was a weird move, but it's legal. After King A2, it doesn't make any sense. He played King A2. Um, this move actually gets checkmated. That's what he was hoping for. Um, you can't go here because of mates. You have to go here. Check. This is the only legal move. And then the only way to stop mate is to play King A2. And then Rook D3 is the quickest win. You can also play Rook D5 with this idea, which is the coolest way to win. But the quickest way to win is to go here, threatening mate, and after takes, you have your choice of mates. So you correctly didn't take his quote-unquote sacrifice knight and play king a2. Then he played the most nonsensical move ever. What? It's funny, like, how your opponent lost his way. He had tunnel vision. Like, here, all he thought about was moving all his pieces to your king and mating you. He didn't care if he had to sack all his pieces or not. He's up a knight for nothing. So he, everything wins. He doesn't have to like force the issue and let you queen your h-pawn and sack everything. So he, every move he made was to mate you. He had no interest in the rest of the game. He just wanted to mate you. He's like, I don't care what, what White's doing. I got to mate him. Does it work? I don't care. Now, I have a question for trying to learn. I don't know if you know the answer. Did he see queen takes rook, or he didn't see that? I mean, if he saw it, it's a very strange move. Yeah. Oh, he didn't see queen takes rook. Well, truth hurts. If only he knew the opening better, then he wouldn't play rook takes d2. A throwback to yesterday. All my chess games seem so far away. Da, da, da. Queen E1, always retreat. C4 is explosive. And truth hurts. And he lost on time. I guess he resigned to move 41. Because now you're going to be up a lot of material. Yeah, it says you're plus 23. So that game, you know, if I, I mean, it's, I, I mean, I, I, hamana, hamana, hamana. Yeah. Yeah, one time, Jackie Gleason gave his political opinion. And a guy who didn't agree with him said, yeah, but you're fat. And Jackie Gleason responded, at hominem, hominem, hominem. All right, uh, analysis. There's no numbers. It just says you guys play bad. Man, that's harsh. <sighs> what section is this? The section that's not good. Good. Um, this is the under 1700 section. Yeah. Yeah, what happened was um, trying to learn didn't use any prophylaxis at all that game. So due to that, he played in the C section. I'll be here all night. Hey, oh, man, I'm funny. <clears throat> WC Philads. W.C. Philads is the best. Nobody's better than him. Da, da, da. <laughs> yep, Karen's a lucky woman. Very lucky. You know, unlucky is a kind of lucky. Eh. <clears throat> Yeah, last night when I got home, Karen was asleep, but I woke her up and then she couldn't get to sleep. She thinks about the fat guy annoying her. <clears throat> we got it too deep, possibly. Um, 651, let's get that train going. Well, it's been 53 minutes, so we need another like 12 minutes. 
They said you was hung and you were right, or they was right. Karen getting that blazing saddles joke in. Dun, 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 dun. Why? Why, Mr. Let's see, what was his name? He got they got sued and had to settle out of court with with who? Just a second. Oh yeah, Hedy Lamar sued them and, and they gave her money. Yeah, so so Taggart says, Mr. Lamar, your mouth is purtier than a twenty dollar whore. <laughs> All right. Uh, 67 for white, 75 for black. Pretty, pretty, pretty mediocre. All right. I never play mediocre, but I do play vegan ochre. And if I'm really on fire, like I'm really, then I play vegan okra. Yeah. And if my ass is looking exceptional in, during the game, then I play vegan Oprah. Terrible. I don't know if Karen was here earlier for the long story I told that went nowhere. That was a true story, though. Number four was Oprah. Like, number six was Nicki Minaj. No, no. Number five was Nicki Minaj, and number six was Rihanna. Rihanna? What? Are you kidding me? Number four, Oprah. God damn. I like the guy who gave a fictional character. That's, that was his best answer. <laughs> now, that woman who's on Game of Thrones, he gave the character's name. Was, what? That's, that's a good answer. <laughs> oh, you missed it? Um, Karen, on YouTube, I saw a video today where they said, which woman has great booty instead of beauty? And... One of the answers the guy gave was a fictional character from Game of Thrones. That wasn't up there. The first woman said Marilyn Monroe, but since nobody's heard of her now, that, that didn't get. But the funniest thing was, number four was Oprah Winfrey, which nobody guessed. And what's funny was, they asked all uh, seven billion people on the earth, and nobody said Oprah Winfrey. And still it was number four. That's hard to understand. I'm not sure how Rihanna got on there. I don't think Rihanna has a booty. I think she just, you know, the rest of it. So it didn't make any sense. Yeah. Also, I don't like that Kim Kardashian was ahead of J-Lo, but I'm going to allow it. But I don't like it. Because the Kim Kardashian photo is obviously fake. So that's, I don't, you know, come on. Uh, Nikki's butt is fake. Nicki Minaj. Yeah, I mean, a lot of their butts are fake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I googled Oprah butt. It's pretty large. <laughs> uh, da -da -da. I don't know who Iggy Azalea is because I confuse her with Whatever the joke was earlier, I forgot. Who do I confuse her with? Some other terrible female singer? I forgot what the joke was. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can yeah, Karen, before you were here, we actually had a poll. So I'll just see what your opinion is. Who's better... Who made more money and who's more famous? You can answer those questions differently. Elvis Costello or Lou Reed? Who's better? Who made more money in the career and who was more famous? These questions were all answered like 25 minutes ago in the stream. But I don't think you were here. No, it could have been Serena Williams. Yeah. I mean, Serena Williams is known for her tennis, but... I don't, I don't know. Lou Reed more famous. Lou Reed. 
is more famous than Elvis Costello. All right. Somebody said Shakira, but it wasn't up there. It went, uh, I mean, you know, Shakira's a good answer. Lou Reed is more known in New York. Elvis Costello is more known in Detroit. I'm talking about the whole world. Jerry Reed. Pseudo Ryman subscribed. What? Oh, Ari Ariana Grande and Iggy Azalea. If they were standing next to each other and I was offered a million dollars to walk away or a billion dollars... If I could point the two out, I would do the billion because, you know, I 50-50. It's not more than 50-50. It's not. I have no idea what either one looks like. So if they're staying next to each other, they said which one's which, I guess. Yeah. You like Elvis Costello better. Um, Lou Reed, Elvis. No, I was telling people on the stream I confused them. They're the same person to me, even though one's alive and one's not. Anyway, there's many scenes in Taxi, the television show, that are the greatest scenes ever in TV. One of them, Latka decides he wants to be a playboy, but obviously the way he dresses and the way he acts and the way he talks, you know, women ignore him. So he's learning how to like, you know, be a, like a gigolo kind of guy. So he's dressing like really current in the 70s. And... He's talking much differently than the Lodka character. He's like, hey, baby, you're looking fine today, instead of his usual, you know, Ibida. Then he's got headphones on, and he's, like, doing this. And Danny DeVito takes the record and does that. He goes, ah, hey, man, what is your problem? He says, you shouldn't do that to Elvis Costello. I was listening to Elvis Costello. <laughs> oh, man, that was great when he had split personalities.